and we do hope you get your copy. Well, one of the things I've learned on this crazy adventure of following God is that you never know where his path will take you. My guest today knows that. He's gone from picture framer to inner city minister to full-time artist. You never know what's next. Rob Longley, thanks for joining me. Well, thanks so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Well, one of the things I'm so interested about you is that you took on this incredible challenge to paint Jesus in every book of the Bible. And I think a lot of people would be hard pressed to say how Jesus is depicted in every book, and yet you're painting it. Tell me about it. Um, well, I started the series seven or five, five and a half years ago, but it was a couple of years prior to that that God started to move me back into my art um, through people speaking to me or just um, getting inspired to get back into drawing. Um, and that I dropped drawing after a year and a bit. And then I went to a men's conference um, that we had and one of the pastors was talking about how Jesus was um, described in each book of the Bible. I never heard that before, so that was really cool. Um, so that was about seven years ago. Then I was working at home just collecting, for whatever reason, just out of curiosity, trying to find um, art in art history that would depict a story in the Bible. So I was collecting images, and I thought, well, I should find a picture that would that I could find that would portray each book of the Bible. So there was that, and then I sort of married the idea, then the idea came back that I should um, paint each book of the Bible using what this pastor had said, how Jesus was described in each book of the Bible. And the whole thing just came flooding in and in literally seconds and never, and then, yeah, I hadn't done any art until then for about 23 years, so just in a matter of moments. God downloaded this vision and inspiration for me to paint this series. So it's been a journey. I love how he's preparing you all these little steps along the way and you have no idea. And isn't that how it is? Like he's actually planting a seed and getting us ready and changing our hearts and everything yes, else. And sure. we're completely unaware of it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden one moment it's like, oh, this is all making sense now. Yeah, for sure. So what has that been like? As you've now, you've, you've undertaken that for five and a half years. What has it been like? What has it been like? Wow, it's, a, <laughs> it's been a roller coaster of um, getting to know the Lord in a deeper way through art and how he's challenging me to listen closely to him. Um, I get inspiration. Well, I, I would get an idea to do the painting and then God would say, no, I need you to change this. So it's, I call it listening through the heart instead of my head because my head gets in the way sometimes. And so I call it listening with my heart that I don't understand why I need to change the painting, but in essence, well, eventually the heart is right if you're listening to God, and God is right. So um, the painting changes it more. Um, so it's neat to see that. So yeah, it's, it's exciting to see how God changes and um, and moves me to create and what, what what He's inspiring me to create. And I guess yeah. that's the difference between a, a, an artist who knows God and an artist who's painting maybe from just their creativity. I mean, we think God is the heart of all creativity that comes from Him. And so you can access that, but it's still a process, right? Like you said, trying to, to hear him and get that inspiration and paint it, do yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. It's um, getting inspiration through, through the word, through prayer, um, through what's happening on the canvas right now. And it's, um, yeah, just a process of listening. And so it, it, the painting is organic that way, and I don't want it to be my image. I want God to work in and through me to get the message that he wants to portray to the world eventually what, what, what he wants to say to the world. And so I want him to speak through me onto the canvas so the canvas speaks to the world, his message of love and, and peace. So. Well, they're beautiful paintings. Thank Tell you. me, what is your favorite book that you've done so far? Favorite book? Um, I guess Revelations. That was, um, people were always asking me when I'm gonna paint um, Revelation and I said, well, I don't know because it's such a big book and I didn't want to paint the dragons and the lampstands and all that. Um, that's kind of typical, so I wanted it to be a little bit different. Um, so when I was painting it, I started, I actually painted it three times until I got the image that I finally is what what is on the canvas now. And uh, so it was just a process of, yeah, just redoing the painting over and over again until I knew that God was working in me to get what he wanted. and. The painting that is the final painting came within a day, um, where before I was working several hours or days to try and create an image that I thought was right. But then each time God was saying, no, no, that's not 
what I want you to paint, and then my, my spirit didn't feel right about it either. And then eventually it was, yeah, just paint. Um, God told me not to plan anything for Revelations, just to, to paint. The um, struggle of just, art. Just, just the struggle of art, and, and yeah, not to plan anything, just to listen to him, and he'll tell me what he wants to paint. So. You, you know, I'm listening to you, and I think God is always working on so many different levels. That's what always surprises me about him. I yes. think he's doing one thing, and then I find out he was doing five others, and then there's ten other yeah. things I didn't even know about. Yeah, and I sure. think, like, yes, he's using you to paint this message to the world, and that's going to live on. And who yeah. knows how that everybody, art, one of the things about art is everyone sees it differently. Yeah. But it seems to me in your life, what God is really interested in doing is, is deepening his relationship with you and revealing himself to you. Yeah. So what's the most surprising thing you've learned about God as you've gone through each of these books of the Bible? The most important thing, surprising thing about what I've learned from God, um, I think just the depth of love that he has for me and how passionate he is for me, um, that even when I'm making mistakes, creating what I think needs to be put on the canvas, that there's latitude in his love to embrace that. Um, and just knowing that he's standing beside me smiling and enjoying the process of me trying to listen to him, I think has really been profound. It didn't start that way. It started out as paintings, but as I guess I grew and matured in, the, in that process of painting the books of the Bible, it became um, more of a relationship with God, I guess, or a, a deeper relationship with God. And yeah, just that there's nothing that we can do to prevent God from loving us even in our mistakes, that he's still there embracing us, just like a child, like he's learning to walk and the parent loves to, to watch the child struggle to learn how to walk and holding on to things and the child may fall, but that's okay. The parent is still there loving the child. And that's the way I see God is um, loving me and my struggle to listen to him, to find out what to paint on the canvas. He's so much more gracious than we think he is. I often think if I were in charge of the world, a lot more people would be dead. Oh, for you know sure. what I mean? And <laughs> yeah, so, for sure. And I'm so thankful because he always surprises me by the depth of his kindness and his grace and his love. Yeah, for you sure. know, I know a lot of artists and, and, the, and they seem to be a little tortured soul, like that right brain, that inspiration. Yeah. You know, uh, most artists don't believe in themselves. There is a tortured element to it. Do you have, what advice do you have for artists who are watching this saying, Rob, help me get to the place where you are? Wow. Um, I think it's just a process of developing, a, it's all about developing a relationship with the Lord and trusting wherever you are artistically or whatever ministry or wherever you are with the Lord that that is where you start from and that in that process God takes you from A to B to C to D and not to worry about where I'm going or where God is leading me but just be in the moment with God that this is the best place that you can be with him. Um, and in that process, he's the good shepherd, right? Mm -hmm. And he leads us and he feeds us and he protects us and, and he gives us what we need to carry on our life. John 15 is my favorite passage of, 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 from the Bible and it speaks so profoundly about God's love relationship with us that if we stay abiding in him that he will grow us. We don't, we don't produce the fruit that he produces the fruit through us as we connect and stay connected with him. And so I carry that with my art, uh, that I can't do this art without him. And I'd encourage any artist out there, any Christian artist or artist to connect with the Lord and, and stay connected with him and allow him to mature. He, I allowed him to mature me, so I encourage other people to mature in the Lord just through, through their daily art. Love that. Yeah. You know, control is an illusion. Not one of us can get through a day without God. Just sometimes no. we don't know it and we believe that we don't need him. You're such an inspiration. Thanks so much for coming today and sharing your story. It's well, been a pleasure. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's great to be here. So, yes. Thank you. And if you want to find out more about Rob's art, you can go to his website. It's www.longviewgodart.com. It's there on the screen. Write it down. Check out his art. See all that, that he is doing and God is using him to speak through. It's, it's amazing art.